Um, thank you all for being here today. Um, we will start with public comments. Oh, sorry. We'll start with roll call attendance. Um, so Emma Cornwell. Hello. Hi. Here, I'm here. Thanks. Councillor Dubs. Here. Sydney Meininger. I see your hand waving. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Jenna Perna Elias. Here. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Um, Kathy Nuri said she would not be able to be here this evening. And I don't see Marilyn Claire. And I don't see Rodney Kuna. All right. Thank you all. Um, so we'll start with public comments. Thank you all for being here today. Um, just a heads up that commissioners are not able to respond to public comments during that public comment time or, or during this meeting. Um, we really appreciate you being here and voicing um, your ideas and opinions and thoughts. Um, if you could keep your comments to about two minutes, we would be grateful for that so that the meeting doesn't go um, you know, on and on and on. So if you can be concise within about two minutes, that would be wonderful. Um, and if you could state your name and where you live, that would be fantastic. And I see, Claudia, your hand is up, so you may start us off. Yeah, thanks. Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. I'm here to comment about um, the situation in Gaza and the West Bank and now Lebanon in terms of disability. I was listening to the news this morning and, you know, the doctor was saying one in 10 children in Gaza is now disabled, missing some le a leg, a limb and or whatever. And what a challenge this is going to be going forward, not only for the medical community, but for the rebuilding of the infrastructure. And in, in a sense, like rebuilding the whole you know, the whole vision of being disabled, which, you know, is looked down on in so many places, or it's, it's, it's looked, it's made to seem so like, whatever, you know, it, it's not a positive image. And, I'm thinking of you all in the Disability Commission and how, uh, and the city's resolution around Israel and Gaza and Palestine, and how one of the mandates was that it would the city would combat and condemn manifestations of anti-semitism islamophobia and would also affirm rightful um the right to existence and that they would educate the public around with workshops and so forth and it seems to me the disability commission not that you don't have a lot to do already might think about this because I don't know personally of any efforts the city has made so far to do any of these things, to, to make statements about what's going on anymore or to set up workshops or whatever. So I'm just trying to register um, my concern about this and hope that the Disability Commission might speak up um, to support some, some further efforts, some more overt efforts on the part of the city. So thanks. Thank you, Claudia. Jacob. I um, <clears throat> appreciate those comments, Claudia. My name is Jacob Drew. I'm in Florence. Um, I wanted to just publicly thank the Disability Commission for all of your advocacy. Um, we recently had the sidewalk fixed in front of our house um, on Chestnut Street. And I've recently been able to send my 14 year old boy who uses a wheelchair to Cooper's to buy me groceries. Uh, and that felt great. Um, I'm not sure he was that excited about that being, you know, one of the things that comes with the accessibility, but I actually think he liked it. Um, so really appreciate it. And, um, you know, these, these are not just theoretical conversations. These make a real impact in people's lives. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the continued work that the commission will be able to do, especially after the recent 
allocation of uh, 800,000 or so dollars from uh, by the city council in the last city council meeting. I'm assuming someone will address that. Uh, Councilor Dubs probably in the in his report. Um, I understand that it's uh, it is disappointing that um, Leeds lost the bridge project, uh, but it does seem like um, the city did a, a good job in um, reallocating it for a really useful and valuable um, calls. And um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy that that happened, and I'm really glad that the Disability Commission, particularly all of you, are going to be involved with prioritizing the sidewalks and fixing in our city. So thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Sarah? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lavalli, the Assistant Planning Director for the city. And I just wanted to mention that uh, the city has received a grant through the State Executive Office of Environmental Energy and uh, Environmental Affairs um, to participate in the Municipal Vulnerability Program 2.0. Uh, so the 1.0 program allowed us to develop a resilience and regeneration plan, and this 2.0 process is really focused on um, outreach and discussions with with different communities to make sure that we you know we've include everybody's voices and that um, our resilience priorities really make sense for everyone. So part of our outreach is to have conversations directly. Uh, with um, environmental justice populations and others, including folks in the disability community. Um, we've developed a core team to help us with that outreach. Um, Amy is a participate participant in that core team. Thank you, Amy, for all your work. Um, and I just wanted to invite you all to have direct conversations either with myself or with Amy about your uh, lived experience and um, your, your own priorities for climate and change and resilience. Thank you, Sarah. Una Koi. Hi. Uh, my name is Una Koi. I live really close to Claudia on one Venturesfield Road in the Montview neighborhood. Um, and I'm here because we have a small group that's starting to organize in our neighborhood around sidewalks. Um, and it has just made a lot of sense to us that we would. Um, connect with you all and and really understand what your priorities are and see how we can be supportive around what we see in our neighborhood, but also really follow your lead as well and support what sidewalks you're noticing need the most priority and lend our voices to that. So here to kind of connect and let you know that we're 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 growing a little group over there. <laughs> um and sort of with Quaverly's um nudge to sort of make what we're thinking about bigger like to not just think about our neighborhood not just think about ward three but how can we really you know think about how resources get used and moved across the whole city and how can that be more how can we all be more engaged in that um and then also hearing claudia speak makes me think also about hurricane helene and a resiliency hearing sarah speak um i just have heard some read some really awful stories about vulnerable communities um, when there's no water and no sewer. So it's made me think about what is what is our plan here? <laughs> because we could so easily have a storm like that come our way. So um, anyway, just offering offering that that perspective as well. Thank you all for being here and for serving our city. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other public comments? Great. Thank you all. I appreciate and I, I we appreciate you all uh, showing up to public comment and um, sharing your your thoughts. We appreciate having visitors. <laughs> um, so I wanted to welcome Jenna Perna Elias to the commission. Um, you weren't able to make it last month, Jenna, and and we we did talk about you. I don't know if your ears were burning, but um, with you being here, um, wanted to say welcome. Thank you for serving on the commission. Um, we're excited to have you on board. Thank you. Um, and circling back to our last meeting, uh, Court Klein had said he could put a link to the July resource fair on the website, it is there, it is up um, and available. Thank you so much, Court, for doing that. 
So that was the disability resource fair that happened in July. And there's a recording. There were fantastic speakers uh, from the community, the larger community uh, who came and spoke. So if you weren't able to attend, the recording is on the disability uh, commission page on the city's website. Um, so approval of the previous minutes from September 10th, 2024. Um, are there any comments about the previous, or actually, Court, do you want to start with, um, I know you've made a couple changes. Right, to, right. To the I minutes. have to remember what the changes were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy right. to jump in if sure. you don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Amy. Okay. So we added, um, there was a reference to sidewalks on specific streets. Right. recommendations that the Disability Commission shared with DPW. So the names of those streets were added in uh, to the minutes. Um, and then the attendance, sorry, and I actually don't have it right in front of me, but the attendance shifted. So to reflect that Kathy Murray was not in attendance, um, Rodney Kunath was not in attendance, Marilyn Clare was not in attendance and Jenna Perna Elias were not in attendance. So we had a small group last month of four commissioners. Um, and then court, if you could take the, the people from the public out of that little box where it says members. Oh yeah. Okay. If, if you can just take <clears throat> the names, sure. that would be great. Um, are there other changes or comments on the minutes before we Emma go ahead you're uh, muted right now just so you know yeah yeah um in item seven I noticed that the date said in 2017 for the sidewalk inventory but I think it's 2018 yeah so the inventory itself was done in 2017 i guess but oh. then the report was written in 2018 so that they started halfway through the year which was part of the reason it was like that but so never mind i take it back <laughs> yeah sorry about that emma yeah good catch emma <laughs> yeah good catch though yeah i appreciate you reading them with such thoroughness that's great um all right, so uh, does anyone move to pass the minutes from September 10th? I'll make a motion to pass the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Dubs. Councillor Dubs made a motion, and is there a second? I'll second it. Um, does that include to pass it with these notes that Amy just? Thank you for that clarification. Yes. So this is uh, the motion and the second is to pass the minutes as they are amended. Gotcha. Seconded. Okay. Thank you. So Emma Cornwell seconded. Um, so a roll call vote. Emma Cornwell. Yes. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Sydney Meininger? Thumbs up. Thank you, Sydney. And Jenna Perna Elias? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. So the minutes passed unanimously from September 10th, 2024. Um, a report from City Councillor, Councillor Dubs. Hello. Um, thank you. Um, I have a, a pretty big, <clears throat> exciting announcement to make, um, which I think everybody's going to be pretty happy about. Um, so you know that uh, I often talk about, or we often talk about the budget and how there isn't enough in the budget towards sidewalks. <clears throat> well, um, um, currently at our, uh, so at our last city council meeting, we were introduced uh, to an order to reprogram hotel bridge funds for sidewalk repair. Uh, this is what uh, Jacob Drew was referring to in his public comment. Um, so basically, 
the city had um, a project in Leeds to to fix the hotel bridge, and they, it, uh, I you know I, I don't know exactly why, but they decided to end that project and um, and they're reallocating the funds for that project to go towards the sidewalk um, repairs in Northampton, and the total amount uh, that they're reallocating is eight hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred thirty one dollars and twenty two cents, and then when you add that to the $250,000 um, that was already going towards sidewalks um, for the upcoming year, um, that would be $1,073,631 total going to total going towards sidewalk repairs. So it's a, a big victory for sidewalk advocates in Northampton. Um, and so I just want to uh, congratulate everybody on the hard work. And um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to do this again next year um, because, you know, this is not a permanent solution to re repairing sidewalks, but um, this is a good start and that it shows that the, the city, the city is listening to people speaking up about sidewalks. And so that's, in my opinion, great news. So that's my update. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you, Councillor Dubs. That is incredible. Incredible news. Fantastic. Super exciting. Yes. Thank Very you. Exciting. Thank you for all of your work. Of course, you too. Everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. The next agenda item is following up on the sidewalk report and the recommendations that we made to DPW and the meeting that Emma Cornwell and I had with Director Lascalia last week. Um, so I've got, I've got four parts to this, so bear with me. I wanted to circle back. Sydney, I think it was you who had mentioned a, a large crack on King Street. So a work order um, was put in for repairing that crack. So that will be followed up on. I wanted to let everybody know that. Um, and so we shared um, our input with Director Liscalia and I wanted to just share, um, Director Liscalia, I do see that you're here, but I hope it's okay that I'm just gonna share your responses um, with the commission. Um, so we had uh, suggested parts of South Street. Um, and so uh, what DPW shared back is that uh, they're working on an application to the state to get this on the TIP program where the state would pay for reconstruction and that is pending. Um, we had suggested um, kind of the 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 larger streets, uh, Williams, Holyoke, Pomeroy Terrace in that neighborhood as a, um, kind of top priority, but certainly the all the sidewalks in that neighborhood need attention. Um, and so DPW is looking at 2026 for this. So it is on their radar. It is a as I think we could all imagine an enormous project. So um, that that is uh, on their radar. <laughs> um, Market Street, we had uh, suggested Market Street and um, needs to wait until after the Main Street reconstruction since that project will have impact on that area. Um, State Street, looking at segments of State Street for next summer. Um, and Main Street, uh, again, to be corrected as part of the, the Main Street redesign. Um, and then we are in communication about Finn Street, as there are some problematic narrow areas um, on Finn Street. So, just wanted to, uh, Director Lascalia, do you want to pop in with any of that right now? Um, sure, thank you. And hi, everyone. Donna Lascalia, uh, GPW Director. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and hope that 
um, I might join your meeting um, with a little more frequency um, in, in the coming months if if invited and if you'll have me. Um, but just to follow up, I, I appreciate the list um, that, that Amy and Emma shared with me. Um, and just a couple of comments because I know that um, all of these are priority areas. So I just want to clarify a couple of things. The the Ward 3 neighborhoods, so William Street and Pomeroy and kind of that whole area um, off of Pleasant Street, we have a considerable amount of utility work to do in that area. Um, we've been doing sewer work um, all uh, summer long and the gas company has been in the area. Um, before we can get in and do any sort of a reconstruction, that utility work needs to be finished up. Um, we need to pay. Um, sorry. I think Claudio is um, talking maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I I think as part of um, anything we do in that area, we just have to wait for the utility work to, to finish up, um, which is why there's going to be a little bit of a lag. Um, on Market Street, there will be some overlap with the Main Street project. So, you know, kind of the approach on Market Street where it meets Main Street, um, that, that'll be sort of um, pulled into the Main Street uh, project. So we need to kind of just hold on that for right now. Um, but obviously we can take care of, of like major tripping hazards. And then I think maybe once we get to the next part of, of your presentation, Amy, or comments, um, we can talk a little bit about what our plans are for, for State Street. And that'll be part of the, the $800,000 um, that we're having a conversation about at council. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Court, I was hoping to screen share, if that's mm -hmm. all right. Um, yeah. And is she a co-host? If you make her a co-host. Oh yeah, that's what I need to do. Right. Ah, right. I kept thinking. I uh. There you go. <laughs> Thank all you. Right. Thank you. And, oops, sorry, you're seeing my, um, I get to the right tab, too many tabs. <laughs> um, so one of the things that came up in the meeting with Director Lascalia is that there exists an ordinance which uh, really dictates what DPW um, has to do with sidewalks. So as they're going in to pave streets, they are required to put in um, sidewalks on both sides of the road and to put in cement concrete sidewalks, um, which is a fantastic aspirational goal. Um, and when you start to kind of tease that apart, you might see that it could be rather limiting um, with what can get done and how quickly we can make Northampton more accessible. So um, Emma and I would like to have a full conversation on this and add it as an agenda item for next month and invite um, Director Lascalia to come and speak about it. And um, I would ask that the commissioners um, look at this ordinance between now and then and, and read it and think about it and maybe have conversations with people. Um, and I'm gonna ask court to include, and we can be in contact, but to include a link um, when you send out information after this meeting so that folks have a link to this ordinance to review it. Um, so this came up in conversation um, because of the question um, last month, I believe Jacob Drew brought up the question about how is the 250,000 spent? 
Like, how is it decided how that money gets spent on sidewalks annually? And so um, that, yeah, so that's where this uh, conversation led. Um, so just so you all know that that was part of the conversation and um, we would like to continue that conversation in the Disability Commission meeting next month. Any questions from commissioners now or anything to add? I, I know I might have um, <laughs> done a, a, a muddly job with that, Director Lascalia, compared to <laughs> all the details that go into it, but if you want to jump in and add anything at this point. Um, sure, I just have one comment that might be helpful. So we have inventories for our roadways, like the traveled surface that cars drive on. And then we have an inventory for our sidewalks. And then we have inventories for all of our utilities. And so our charge is we have to sort of put everything together and then say, how are we going to spend our money? But the complete streets ordinance that you see on the screen in front of you is actually requiring us to do sidewalk work and sometimes to do very expensive sidewalk work on any street which we pave. So we have all of these roads that are falling into disrepair. The sidewalks aren't necessarily in disrepair. The sidewalks don't necessarily align with our sidewalk priorities, but we need to pave the road, which is forcing us into a position where we have to address the sidewalks even if we have worse sidewalks somewhere else where we would rather spend the money. So that's our challenge because we have the complete streets ordinance that is it, it, well uh, uh, intended. It's a great um, sort of aspirational document, concrete sidewalks on both sides of the street on every street, like that's great and we support that. But the financial reality is such that um, you know, we want to be able to send our resources where they are both where they are most needed. So we don't necessarily have sidewalks and streets, both in um, the same level of disrepair that are aligning. So that's the conversation we need to have. And is there something we can do with this ordinance to tweak it a little bit to allow us to deploy our resources a little bit better? So that just kind of builds on Amy's remarks. Thank you for that eloquence. <laughs> All right, so any other, um, any thoughts from commissioners at this point or anything to, to add, Emma? Okay. So the last part of the sidewalk conversation is um, can, what? Can I ask a question? Um, I, it's supposed to be during public comment, but um, I guess you can ask a question, but we might not be able to answer it. Yeah, I mean, every meeting is different. Sometimes the public on these commission meetings is allowed to comment during the conversation. But I'm just curious when you say the crack was reported on King Street, when does a repair, when does a, a report like that um, result in an action? Do you know what I mean? So somebody reports there's a crack on King Street. What may, makes it then a priority and maybe you're going to fix King Street so that like a woman fell on the corner of Williams and Holyoke Street and was you know injured, but nobody's coming to fix that. So I'm curious what triggers a reaction to fix the sidewalk? Thanks. I won't enter the conversation if you don't want me anymore. Thank you for that question. And I'm gonna um, figure out the answer offline before our next meeting. And then um, I can email you, Claudia. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna write that down so I remember. Thanks, thanks very um, much. Yeah, thank you for the question. All right. Um, so, so this last part is the super I, I'm still kind of in shock that um that sidewalks are going to get this much attention and repair and um it's 
incredibly exciting. And thank you to Director Lascalia and Mayor Shiara for prioritizing sidewalks with this these monies. Um, so I'm going to screen share a list of um, potential repairs that DPW is looking at for these the the money um, this this big pot of money and the director Lascalia, do you want to do the speaking directly about this or I can uh, it, whatever is your preference I, I'm happy to just kind of walk Okay. Sort of a high level strategy and and I mean it's quite a list so I, we don't necessarily want to go thing by thing but um right. I I'll I'll defer to you however you like Okay so let me let me frame it and then um if you can give uh, you know the the kind of the ideas behind it sure. um so I'm thinking we'll spend you know maybe only 10 minutes looking at it um so what I'm going to ask is that, uh, Court, if you can share this with the commissioners after this meeting, and then commissioners, if you can spend um, whatever time and effort you're willing to give to it to look through, um, it it could be you know a full time job <laughs> with the level of detail that DPW has has gone into for the city. Um, but to make sure there are things on there that haven't been missed in your experience would be um, really beneficial to this project to make sure that um, kind of the the priorities uh, given the thinking align with the needs that are out there. Um, so this is so there are four four main categories. So uh, Director Lascalia, if you want to take the baton? Um, sure, I'd be happy to. So just very briefly, um, let's just talk about the hotel bridge for 30 seconds. So the hotel bridge is a 1800s bridge in Leeds um, that we were going to reopen to bikes and pedestrians because it had fallen into disrepair. And our original project estimate was a half a million dollars to repair the bridge. We bid the bridge three times and the price to restore that bridge on um, reopen it to bikes and pedestrians was around $2 million. Um, by the time we worked in a contingency and construction oversight and actually paid the contractor. So Mayor Shiara um, supports uh, a huge investment in our sidewalks. And as we talked through what our strategy should be around what to do with the bridge, we determined that this was a great place to route those resources. I think for a half a million dollars with that bridge, it was a great project and everyone felt good about it, but it a $2 million plus project um, when there are so many other needs elsewhere in the city, it, you know, this is a very difficult decision, but there are so many things that we could do with this money. That's why Mayor Shiara decided to take the money and route it to sidewalk. So that's the order that's at council. So that's just a brief comment on, on the bridge, um, just to clarify Councilor Dubs um, earlier uh, summary and just to give a little bit of background. So what we at DPW have been doing is compiling a priority list based on our sidewalk inventory um, that we talked about a little bit earlier, and also based on injury reports. And, and I'm I, I hate to say that it, that we have enough injury reports um, from people having incidents on sidewalks that we actually pay very close attention to those um, because you know the inventory was done in 2017, 2018. Conditions can change and and things in the field can be a little bit different now than they were um, several years ago. So we we want to pay very close attention to where folks are getting injured. 
Um, and so what we have been doing is we have been compiling a list of priority repairs, again, based on our inventory, based on injury reports, um, and based on work orders that are called into us. And we have compiled this priority list. So if council were to vote this money to sidewalks, these are the priorities um, that we would pursue. So um, pretty straightforward item number one. Um, and I also just want to note that the sidewalk inventory suggests that the city prioritizes sidewalks that are within a certain radius of schools, within a certain radius of uh, downtown business districts. So that's why you're going to see particular targeted areas. So number one, uh, sidewalk near the high school. So um, it's in pretty significant disrepair. Um, and I uh, unsuccessfully attempted during my meeting with Amy and Emma to do like a Google street view, but had a pretty poor connection. But if, if folks are interested in kind of what the sidewalk looks like, I suggest you go onto Google street view and you can sort of work your way um, up and down any of these streets and you can, you can see just how bad it is. So um, it's a pretty long stretch of sidewalk uh, all the way from Cooley to the high school. Um, Bedford Terrace, both sides of Bedford Terrace are in a terrible state of disrepair. Um, and there's a particularly bad injury there that um, caught my attention. Um, and so this definitely um, rose to the top of the list. Um, I'll also mention as part of this, we've had several injuries down by Michael's house. Um, so uh, on that section of State Street, so we would want to pay attention to that. And there's also the crosswalk going across uh, Bedford Terrace is very uh, long. So there's a lot of pedestrian exposure and we would want to shrink that crosswalk. So we want to put some physical bump outs into the road to sort of shrink that crosswalk to give pedestrians less exposure as they try to clear that intersection. Um, so then, Amy, if you were to scroll down this list, um, we have to be very, very precise when we bid uh, sidewalk work when we did any work, actually. Um, so we can't just say, well, you know, go to the street and fix the sidewalk. We have to give very, very specific instructions to our contractors about, you know, where they're going and what they're doing when, when they get there. And that's typical of, of any bid documents. So what we have done is we have compiled an extremely comprehensive list of very targeted areas in the city um, and, and done a field assessment um, of what the problems are and how we would uh, potentially do spot repairs. What we're seeing is a lot of places up on Village Hill where trees were planted right by concrete sidewalks. And now those trees have grown. The tree roots are actually heaving the sidewalk panels. The sidewalk panel needs to be removed. We need to put in a flexible porous uh, sidewalk surface um, so that that tree can continue to coexist with the sidewalk and we never have this problem again. So that is the goal of all of these spot repairs. Um, so this is kind of a, a summary of what we saw up on Village Hill in these particular streets. And if you scroll down, Amy, um, you can see um, South Street, you know, these are a lot of streets off of South Street um, that have um, fallen into considerable disrepair. And it, most of these are due to tree conflicts. So, you know, trees and sidewalks have um, kind of a difficult interplay, you know, as the tree grows and gets bigger and the roots move around. Um, the sidewalk panel uh, heaves. So if you were to pay attention on Pleasant Street or on Hampton Avenue, um, we actually have like a flexible um, sidewalk surface around some of the larger trees there. And that's what we would be looking to install in a lot of these places. So I just want to be careful to not misrepresent this list. And, you know, you can keep scrolling and it keeps going. I mean, we've been, we've been very thorough. There's a lot going on here. Um, but I just want to be clear that you know, for $820,000, which is the value on the order, we will not be able to get all of this work done. The goal will be to get as much done as we possibly can, um, prioritizing um, the high school area, prioritizing Bedford Terrace, 
and then kind of targeting what we can of the spot repairs um, it, just in order to to hit the, the worst areas. But, um, you know, we have a backlog of millions of dollars and, it, you know, this will take a bite out of a, a bunch of problem spots. Um, but it is certainly not going to be enough money to address every single thing on this list. But for those who wonder, you know, oh, there's a work order. Has it sort of gone into thin air? Is anyone paying attention to this? We actually are paying attention and we actually generate lists like this. Um, and we just need the money to do it. So I'm certainly grateful to Mayor Shara for bringing this order forward and very hopeful that council will vote the order um, so that I can get this out to bid and, and we can get this moving. So I, I think that's, I'll stop there and, and hopefully that's a good, uh, clear summary. Yes, thank you very much. Um, does anyone, I don't know if I'm scrolling too slowly or too quickly, does anyone need to see a particular area or um, have questions for Director Lascalia right now about any of these um, priorities? Are you taking questions from non-commissioners? I wasn't clear about that before. Um, I, I, I would be fine with questions, knowing that we might not be able to respond right now. Yeah, I mean, my question is like, is there any way that you also factor in how recent the work was done in that place? Like, is that a piece of it? I mean, I think with Village Hill, those developments were not that long ago compared to, you know, the South Street neighborhoods, I would think would have not been paid attention to as recently. I'm just curious if that's a piece of what you factor in. Thank you for that question. I'm going to, um, so kind of the age of development, age of the area. Or the last time it was worked on. Okay. Um, I, I, I'll again, follow up for sure, but, um, I am aware that if you've seen the 2018, you probably have, if you're involved in the sidewalk group, the 2018 Alta sidewalk, um, report showing the priorities and director Lascalia mentioned this, the priorities being within a quarter mile of um, schools and then a quarter mile of Florence Center and downtown Northampton. And then uh, there are four categories of priorities. So I think cross-referencing that report and those priorities with um, the accident reports that come in from people having accidents on sidewalks, I believe that's how this list came to be. Um, but you know, I can follow up specifically about the your your question about the last time it was worked on and the age of the area. Any other questions? So so again, uh, commissioners, you'll get a copy of this. So if there are um, specific spots on here that you think are a very high priority, that is something that um, would be good information to pass on to DPW, or if there's anything that you think is missing in these areas, um, like any little sections that could use um, reports that for some reason didn't make the list, that is also good information to pass on to DPW. So if uh, commissioners, if you could um, send your input to me or is it okay court if people send stuff? So either to, to court or to myself and um, I will send information on uh, to Director Lascalia so that she has that information from the Disability Commission to, to work with. That would be fantastic. Any other thoughts or comments on this massive undertaking, massive and exciting, transformative? 
Yeah, I have a comment if I can. Sure, Claudia, go ahead. Um, I've been going, you know, in communication with Carolyn Mish about traffic calming and what is it and what isn't it. And as I understand it, sidewalks are part of considering how traffic is calmed. Like if you have people walking along a sidewalk, cars will, you know, take note of it and that helps calm traffic. So is this something that's figured in? Don, I guess I addressed it to, to Donna. Does does the idea of of what is the like sort of the whole need of the transportation there. Do we want to have good sidewalks and they will also help calm traffic. So does that figure into the scale of how things rate, get rated, for instance? Do you know how much traffic there is in, in the neighborhood at all? Just saying, I'm trying to make all of this work in some sort of way that, you know, I can imagine a whole neighborhood's repair system or something. So that's that's my co kind of complicated question. Yeah, bringing it all together. Yeah, seeing if if it if it counts, does traffic calming figure in with this uh, side? Gotcha. gotcha. Thank you for that thought, Claudia, and we'll add that to the mix of of questions. Um, commissioners, any other thoughts or questions? I have a few, but I think that I might just have missed some stuff last month. So I'll check in with folks on the commission out of the meeting <laughs> to get Are you caught. sure? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's okay to, for us to go over something again, if you wanted to get. No. That's all right. Thank you though. Okay. All right. Uh, well, feel feel free to follow up uh, by by email with me if you wanna if you have specific questions if I can be of of help in catching up with anything. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Director Lascalia, for being here and giving um, giving the presentation so that it is accurate and thorough and complete. It, yes, thank you for your hospitality. I appreciate it and hope to see you uh, back here next month. Yes, thank you. I'll be in okay. touch about that. Okay, great. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, I'm going to stop screen sharing. Um, all right, so the next agenda item is following up on the public service announcement for snow shoveling and next steps. So I reached out to um, someone who's on the East Hampton Disability Commission and they checked in with the East Hampton media um, about the footage. Emma had this idea about, could we just use the footage that already exists in East Hampton? They have a, a PSA about encouraging people to shovel their sidewalks within 24 hours after a storm. And um, so the media person gave the okay. So then I reached out to them directly and um, they said, sure, no problem. But unfortunately they don't have a copy of it. So it didn't get saved. Um, so we're welcome to go onto YouTube and somehow grab that footage. And this is beyond my expertise. <laughs> so if that's possible to do, then we can use their footage and give them credit and we can record our own um, voice and you know we can narrate it how we would like to. So Councillor Dubs, do you have any uh, knowledge about this? Um, I've never done that before, but I know that I've heard that it can be done. Okay. You okay. Can, I'm pretty sure you can download videos from YouTube, although okay. I've never done it before. Okay. Well yeah. that's promising. If you send me the link to their um to yep. their PSA, I can try to do it. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Um, I am 
still waiting to hear back from Northampton Open Media. I've reached out a few times and haven't heard back about, I, I chatted with, with them in the spring, but in the past month since our last meeting, haven't heard back about um, working on this project and if we can get that footage from the, the video from East Hampton and putting our own voice on top and um, getting their support with that. So I'm, I'll am i reach out again, but if anyone knows anyone at Northampton Open Media, um, that's we see, we see them at, uh, we see them, some people from them at uh, city council occasionally. So I can maybe ask someone at city council. At yeah, the, at the, yeah, that'd be great to just yeah. to see what, you know, what, what do we need to do for next steps or how do we make that happen? Um, so sure. I think, I think looking at the, the East Hampton video, um, and then writing a script that would go with it. I know Councillor Dubs, you, you and Jacob worked really hard already on another alternative, but that might not be in the cards right now. Right. If, if we're maybe not, someday, maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, thank you. And ben oh, like, oh yeah, sorry, I was going to mention, yeah, Ben just... Uh, okay, thank you. Um, if the folks who uploaded the video still have access to the YouTube account, then there is an official way they can do this. Oh, thank you, Ben. Okay, I will, I'll circle back and ask them. There are also lots of unofficial ways of doing it, um, but they're not necessarily according to the rules and you can't necessarily guarantee you'll get the same quality that you would doing it the official way. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll I'll circle back with, with East Hampton Media to see if they have access to their account and we can get it officially that, that way. And if not, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um uh does is anyone interested in looking at the footage and coming up with um, the the voice for us, like writing out the script? If I'd no, at, um, sorry, hey, well, go we ahead. got two takers. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was just gonna say that if I would work on it with somebody else, maybe if they want, if anyone else wants to jump in, possibly Jenna. I was gonna say if it doesn't have to be people on the commission and no one was interested, I work for Milestones, which is a day program for adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities. And we have a video production class and they've been like learning a lot about producing videos and they could be interested in writing a script um, and even doing the recording if no one from the commission wanted to do it. But I don't even know if that's allowed. And Jeremy, if you're interested, Absolutely, don't have doesn't have to be something the class does, but I feel like that class would be into it. I don't know. That sounds pretty cool to me. But, That's yeah. super cool, Sydney. Okay. Your hands up. I would do it, but I would not want to do it by myself. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we've got Sydney potential and this class potential. Well, Sid. We could not do it during the class and do it during elective time with some of the people in the class. We could do that. And we, okay. we do have some recording equipment here too. Okay. So um, can I email you both and I'll include you, Counselor Dubs? Sounds great. To, yeah. To, to follow up on this. Okay. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Thank you all. Sweet. So it would be so great to have a PSA put out before the snow flies. Awesome, thank you. Um, the next agenda item is the discussion of the city's outdoor dining policy and accessibility. Um, I do wanna screen share again, if that's okay. Uh, and sorry about that. So, um, in looking into this, um, the city has um, has the has outdoor dining and seating requirements updated May twenty twenty one. 
So there are uh, rules, regulations in place regarding um, the outdoor dining experience in Northampton. Uh, the One of the key things that jumps out is the minimum width of an accessible route of 36 inches. Um, and then the surface, uh, an accessible route must provide a running slope me measuring between zero and 5% to Amy, remain I'm away. sorry to interrupt, but are you yeah. able to zoom in at all? I'm sorry. It's really hard to read. Like, at yes, the sorry. No, no, no. Me. Thank you. Is that better? Much better. Yeah. For okay. me. Thank, Thank you. you for saying something. Um, so... So um, again, I'll ask court, I, and I can send this to you, court, but um, to include this link and what you send out to the commissioners after the meeting. Um, but uh, folks can notice it's at NorthamptonMass.gov, um, and if you if you search under the search function for outdoor dining, this will come up. But but again, um, yeah, for, for folks who are not commissioners, but um, again, commissioners will get a link to this. So, so there are protocols set up. Um, and if, if a, a restaurant or, you know, a, a, um, a business is not following these, then that would go, um, to the, sorry, I'm taxing my memory here, to the building inspector um, who would then follow up with that establishment individually. Um, and they are, uh, there was one concern about Moshi Moshi. And so that establishment has been followed up with. There was still a concern for one tight spot that um, might not have been 36 inches. So there's been a request for um, the building inspector to go back and check on that spot. So I wanted to follow up with everyone about that concern that was brought to the commission. Um, so any questions? about the... Yeah, the can I speak to that? Uh, yes. Chris. Yes, hi, Chris. Hi. Yeah, my concern was, um, I think a high proportion of the outdoor seating has one or another detail of non-compliance with the requirements of the MAAB. Um, you know, reasonable flexibility was allowed because of the pandemic to let, you know, much more extensive outdoor seating be put in place. Um, the options would be either to have a whole series of complaints go to the access board or in some more systematic way to carry out some kind of survey of conditions and bring together um, you know, that segment of the business community and and uh, inform them as a group and try to get um, something that would be less contentious um, and less driven by, um, you know, the judicatory process that the access board goes through. Spoleto, for example, um, uses P-Stone, absolutely not allowed under the MAAB. It has a boardwalk approaching its entrance, absolutely non-compliant with MAAB. Uh, with Mushi in there, the question is, what's the proper location for um, uh, the seating area if you have continuity of what is the primary walkway that is the concrete center area of a walk we, uh, which is occupied by tables there so that the pedestrian route is diverted to the side to brickwork. Well, brickwork is both less stable, but also for people with limited vision who are navigating with a cane, straight shorelines is an important access feature. 
you know, not having to zig and zag your way through the environment. I'm not sure whether every provision is covered, and I, I doubt it is under the, um, you know, the current uh, written provision for the city. But I think it's worth um, both taking a systematic look and then thinking through whether um, the, the current, you know, applicable would be requirements of the MAAB and then any other specific uh, uh, piece that is reflected in the city requirement, but to really look at it as a group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We've come to the end of the season, but by before the, the next season uh, rolls around of extensive outdoor dining to uh, um, to really shape that up. There's also other provisions under the MAAB. For example, I haven't found a compliant table yet. In the you know, outdoor there, dining. There's a requirement of what constitutes an accessible table and a requirement that a proportion of tables, at least one be, you know. Um, and so that sort of thing, uh, much better to, to go and inform a group of people and provide that as technical assistance and information and, and, and try to get them uh, moving forward, you know, together rather than having being driven by individual complaints. Yeah, I hear you. So, so you haven't found one low table in the outdoor dining? It's not, or? it's not low. It's also the extent of knee space from the edge that allows, I think it's 17 inches of of depth, so it's not only the height of the okay. table, it's also the depth. Then there's the issue yeah. of the places where what is a, you know, a nominally accessible table, usually those are too small to constitute accessible tables, may be located on a sidewalk area where the primary seating is then located on the, the road level. Um, uh -huh. That raises some some questions. I can't say uh, off the top of my head what I think the right policy is, but I think by collecting the information, the commission could then take on those series of questions and see, one, whether it's currently clear under regulation or whether it needs to be clarified. The other thing is that entranceway issue. I know um, going to Summer on Strong, um, which I, I love, um, but very often Judy and I were smashing planters, well, we were gently rolling planters out of the way uh, to make that, you know, entrance space. So there, there's a, quite a number of issues there, I think, all in a bundle. And the best way to deal with it, I think, would be um, systematically. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that comment. Um, I was led to believe, although I haven't been there myself, that the table set up outside of Moshi Moshi was moved so that the 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 pathway is no longer going over the bricks. So I thought that that problem had been rectified. Just very so good. You know that there was still one point that um might not be. 36 inches wide so that uh, there was a request for the building inspector to go back and look at that place but I hear you about looking at it um, systemically really <laughs> rather than piecemeal so thanks for that input any other thoughts on the outdoor dining and seating I have a I have a, a comment. Yes, yeah, sorry, you're. I, is that Claudia? Yeah, it's Cla it's Claudia. Um, yeah. I think that the comments are really interesting. You know, we just have been having this focus on what I was calling walkability, and Jeremy has enlightened me to make it walkability slash movability. And uh, one of the comments at the table, you know, on Monday around walkability had had to do with establishing a department of movability or walkability where there would be people, able, able walkers and movers of all sorts 
can, as we move around the city, taking note of what we find there, it would be a great opportunity for, for some collaboration. Like I walk around all the time, people who walk around all the time who don't have certain constrictions, that we would be collaborating about what do you find when you walk on Strong? What do you find along, you know, along Main Street even? And putting it all together, because it's a huge job for the commission to take on. And it really, I think, is a systemic one where, where the walkability, movability in the city isn't really up to snuff, you know, but there's nobody collecting, I don't think, uh, enough information. So I'm just saying, I'm offering that uh, I'm open to this idea. I think it's a great idea. And hopefully, if you want to reach out to me and our little neighborhood committee, it's a way we could do some great collaboration, perhaps. I, I really like your comments, Chris. Thank you, Claudia. All right, the last agenda item is the um, about a possible next disability resource fair. And just wanting to put a little bug in folks' ears, so to speak, um, that if we do this, it would be probably next July. And it sounds like a long way off, but I think there are some preliminary conversations to be had in the next few months so that we can start making some of the bigger decisions, like are we doing it, where, when, how, so that it's not a, a last minute thing and to really um, you know, think about the focus of it. Climate change is really on my mind right now and you know how climate change affects people in the disability community. Um, just off the top of my head, you know, could be one focus or um, it could be one part of it anyway. So I'm not going to, you know, ask for our hands right now, but just um, commissioners to be thinking about if you would be interested and willing to be part of um, a group that meets separately, that is, of course, fewer than, uh, than quorum, so that we don't violate open meeting law, um, but to, to start thinking about this for the group and then bring information back to the commission meeting. So I just wanted to bring that up so we don't um, lose that thread. All right. So other business not anticipated. Amy, what is quorum? Like what is the number? So right now we have eight commissioners. So quorum is four. So it's it has to be at least um, 50%. So with nine commissioners, when we're full, quorum is five. Um, so because four is not 50% or greater. So um, when we're nine, then quorum is five. Right now, quorum is four. So right now, three of us could meet outside of the group and be okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Any anything else before we... Right, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councillor Dubbs made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second it. And Emma Cornwell mm -hmm. seconds. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thanks for all your input and thoughts and energy. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you, everyone.